this is an hour and 15 or an hour and a half of nonstop BM, Bette Midler. So I don't know what the hell's going to happen. I really don't. I'm Patrick Healy, theater reporter for the New York Times. I sat down with Bette Midler in Beverly Hills, where she's been doing research for her new one-woman play, I'll Eat You Last, which is now in performances in New York. You're returning to Broadway. I am. In a straight play portraying a real-life uh, Hollywood super no agent. No band! <laughs> How do you, some of your fans are going to miss you singing. Well, I do love musicians, and I do love music, and I do love my fans. But you know what? I'm a, a certain age, and it's time for me to try something new. What she's trying is 80 minutes of monologue delivered almost entirely from a couch. It's her first role in a Broadway play since her debut some 40 years ago in Fiddler on the Roof. Now tell me that horrible flop Fiddler didn't sour you on Broadway. For I loved uh, being in Fiddler. I was in Fiddler for three years. What did sour me was that I couldn't get a job. I couldn't get another job. And I figured, well, if I can't get a job in an someone else's play, I'll make my own work. And that's really basically what I did. I made my own work. In the 1970s, Midler earned a following performing alongside Barry Manilow at the Continental Baths, a gay bathhouse in New York. If you see him out on the street, won't you say, please send it up. Here, her singing and brassy personality took root. And in the coming decades, her performances would win her awards and two Oscar nominations. At first, Midler resisted doing Broadway again, seeing all kinds of risks in playing Sue Mengers, a woman who became one of the most powerful talent agents in 1970s Hollywood. You don't own me. But after years playing it safe in predictable roles in ensemble movies, she decided to take on what she now considers one of the toughest jobs of her career. When you think about a project, what goes into that for you in terms of deciding whether to do something or not do something? How many people I'm going to have to meet? <laughs> How many new people? Because new people are hard. A lot. a lot of new people, and it's like, oh, what are their names? They're going to be insulted. They're going to tweet on me if I don't remember their names. Mm. And I have a little trouble with my memory. You know, I'm like, uh, I'm not like what I once was. Uh, although I do look a lot better than I ever did. <laughs> you anyway, look so um, you're playing um, Sue Mengers. I am. She repped Barbara Streisand and many other film Gene stars. Gene Hackman, Ally McGraw. A friend of hers called her a bulldog with charm, which <laughs> I loved. You knew her a little bit. I did know her, and I did like her very much. One of the things I'm nervous about is that people who knew her will come and say, well, that's not Sue. Mm. What's um, a, is there a story about Sue that's particularly tickled you or an anecdote? Oh my God, so many of them, so many of them. She used to say about people who had passed away, they took a dirt nap. She was the queen of the one-liner, but she was also, you know, a big thief. Mm. And if she heard something good, she would just grab it and she would run with it and she would make it her own. Besides being charming and besides being uh, really tough and toxic. This is what the one thing that was very, that I learned in talking to people who knew her well. She could be incredibly toxic and she, would, she could be quite cruel. Sue could also be pretty crude. You recently sent out a tweet uh, recalling how Sue, oh inviting Elton John to dinner, said, is there anything he doesn't eat besides, <laughs> and Sue used a word for the female genitalia. Yes, she did. That, that was a little mild for Sue. <laughs> Sue was a world-class cursor. I mean, she could, she just had a, uh, there's no way to describe the way she talked. There just isn't. You and Sue share a certain public persona. You're both. We both swear. <laughs> well, you're both known as great broads. Yeah, yeah. I hope that word is okay. I love that word. Who, if anyone, is inheriting that mantle? Pink is a great broad. Cheryl Crow is a great broad. Adele is a great broad. None of them are quite the triple threats. What? You've got, well, no, you're you great know. actress, great comedian, great singer. I mean, Thank that's you. Really I, I see you left out dancer. I'm oh, sorry, okay. 